Coach Mike Zumpano, thank you so much for coming on the Christian Coach Podcast. What does it mean to you to be a Christian coach? Uh, man, it's, it's great to be on. Uh, I know we had some conversations before uh, we got on and about uh, the podcast in general, and I'm excited to be here and uh, maybe learn a few things along the way. But no, I, being a Christian coach for me has really been, uh, it, it's been a, a journey. It's been a transformation of my life, to be honest. Um, you know, and it probably started long before I was actually a coach. Um, and I probably like most, like most coaches, they, they start off with a passion for a sport and, and they're a player and, um, and, uh, you know, just as, as, as God kind of leads you along, you, you start to realize that, uh, you know, you, you have kind of a knack for, for being in it. And, um, it really, it, I, I think what it, what it is for me is, is, is it really fits along with the identity that you have in your faith and in, in, uh, in your belief in, in, uh, I think for, for me, I think that started at a, at a kind of a young age and, and it really just blossomed into, into the, the places. And I think the, the role that I'm in as a coach now, um, if I, if I look back in my journey was certainly set up by, by the things that I, I learned as a, as a kid, but, um, but, um, I think has, has kind of grown into a, into a full, uh, full body of what, what I get to do now. So it's cool. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit more about your faith journey. Um, when did it start? Um, and how has that now influenced you to be the coach that you are today? Yeah, yeah. So I think I was born to be a, an athlete in some way or be on a team because uh, I grew up in a family of seven kids. So Oof. we had uh, we had a, we had a, uh, a team uh, growing up. So that was that was something that you just learned to, to be around people. And were you what well, in what order were you born? Uh, so I'm, I'm the second, um, I got an older okay. sister. Um, she, she kind of led the way in our, in our, in our sports, kind of love her sports. Um, she played, uh, several sports. Softball was one of them. And then, uh, and then I have five younger brothers. So, um, we were, we I were feel for house. your mom. Yeah. My, my mom was a, my mom was a warrior, but she's, she's got a, she's got a, a tough streak of her own. So we always, uh, we always kind of, um, we always kind of learn from her a little bit. Yeah. So that's good. good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, we, we just grew up doing sports our whole life. I mean, my, my parents, um, were, uh, were really supportive in that. And in some ways I think it kept them sane just as much (laughs) as it kept us sane. Um, so if, if, if there was a sport to play, we were involved in it. Um, my, my parents were always super sacrificial in the way that they, um, they were committed to helping us to grow. And we, we developed a passion for it pretty young. Um, so I, I think we always loved, uh, watching dad, um, in the backyard or, or even just watching TV. He wasn't the, the premier athlete that most, uh, that, uh, that most athletes might, uh, might look up to, but, um, he just, he's a passionate guy about what he does. And, um, he, he's in the medical field and, uh, and was always super, um, looking for that little bit of an outlet when he, when he, uh, when he had touch base back home. So I think getting us into sports was also a, a little bit of, a, uh, of that outlet for us. And um, so, yeah, we played, we played just about everything. And, um, and, uh, but we, we grew up in a, in a Christian home and, and that was always important to us too. So we always, that, that thread was always woven into, into the, uh, into our, um, our athletic. How, lives. how, how was it woven? Um, yeah, my, my parents, I think were, uh, were involved. They're always kind of involved in church growing up, uh, in, in their lives. And I think they saw that as a value for, for us. Um, when I was really young, I remember them taking us to church and we were kind of church, uh, bouncing around a little bit. I think my parents were kind of discovering new and growing in their faith on their own. They were kind of first generation believers in some sense. Um, you know, they, uh, but they came from strong, strong, uh, faith backgrounds as well. And, uh, they, they just saw that as a value for us. So we were in church, uh, every week. Um, and even as sports started to kind of take over and take off, um, you know, we, we became a big football family pretty quick. Um, and football is obviously played on Sundays, but, um, they, they always made it a point to, uh, say, Hey, like we'll play and you're going to compete. And that's, and, and, you know, if you love that, we want you to do that, but uh, we're, we're, we're not going to skip out on this part because, uh, we see the value in it. And, yeah. um, I think over time it, it definitely, uh, it definitely it sunk in as we got older, like, okay, that's, this is why this, this is a part of it. And it was really transformational for us, for me, especially. So that's good. That's good. Um, you talked a little bit about your mom. 
Um, what, what are some of the things that you've learned from her that now as a coach, now you're shepherding guys, right? Uh -huh. um, what, what are some of these lessons that you learned from just watching her or that maybe she actually taught it to you? Oh yeah. She, um, she, she is, she's a walking miracle. I'll just say that. Um, she, she's, and even more recently, like her story just continues to God continues to do things in her life, um, to, to continue to transform, uh, her and really us as a family. But, um, yeah, she, she had it kind of tough. She, she lost her, her mom when she was young. Um, and she lived, uh, she didn't really live with her dad much. Um, um, they kind of lived in a broken family and, uh, she, uh, she lived with her aunt and uncle who were really supportive uh, of her. Um, but I, I think just, just grew up in a tough scenario. So she was just resilient. I, that was one thing I always, always learned from her is, is um, I don't know, God definitely protected her and you can see that in her life and, and, and set her apart for something different. But, um, but she, uh, she just always had, had a, a you know, a really strong um, conviction about what she did. Um, and, and, uh, and just always kind of had a, a, a stable confidence about her. Um, even, even when she, uh, when she had nothing to really be confident about, she just yeah. kind of, you know, she, she really, um, uh, led the way in that. And I think the other big, the only other big thing that really stands out to me with her is, um, she just, she's, she's willing to be flexible. Like she, she is willing to, to, to shift and mold, to be successful and to be with people. And, um, I can't tell you how many times um, that, uh, you know, I'd be stressed out about something and, or, or see, see something that wasn't going right. And, uh, she's, she's a really, really high moral compass in some ways too. Um, but I, I think, um, even as that was ingrained in us growing up, it was, it, it was hard to kind of overcome some of those things and be a little more like, like patient and gracious. And, uh, and, and she always just had to kind of that calming, that calming word to say. And, um, I think, I think we learned that we learned that well enough where we use that on her now sometimes, but, and she kind of rolls her eyes, but, uh, yeah, she's, she's just always been just a, a stabilizer and, and, uh, and just humbling to learn from her in some, in, in various ways. So, yeah, yeah. I can relate a little bit. My, my parents got divorced. I was young, uh, mm -hmm. I was five years old. My parents got divorced and I moved in with my mom and she, she worked several jobs, you know, and, but you could always tell that that never affected the way she related to me you right. know right and you just feel in you know looking i didn't know at that moment how hard she was working and how hard she was stressed and all those things to provide um but looking back now it, it, it definitely makes me much more appreciative of of those things and and something that i want to pass on to my kids you know and then yeah. my players and and those things um but yeah that's great thank you so much for sharing that uh, appreciate it yeah. um how did you get into coaching um, and, and, and why are you still in it? Yeah. Uh, I, I think over time it was something that I wasn't really sure I was, it was going to be like a long-term thing, but um, I, sports was just such a, such a part of my life growing up uh, that I, I, I think it was always going to end up being there. And um, uh, certainly that's been the, the truth up to this point. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, we just started out, I mean, the fact that we had so many, uh, such a big family, it was always somebody around to, to do something with. So we got involved in everything. I, my first love was football. I, uh, that, that was, I, I learned so much from, from, from that game and from the coaches and the, and the, the teammates that I have. Uh, I mean, I, I, I have, you know, a, annual trips and visits to see friends that I played, I played football with growing up my whole life. And, um, you really do. I mean, uh, I've, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of cliches and a lot of the ways that people talk about football as being like that. But, you know, when, when you really spend a lot of time uh, on the field and, you know, in, you know, it's, it's almost like the army, you know, you just, you go through tough stuff with people and it just, you know, bonds you together. So um, that was my first love. I, I, I took to, I, I, you know, I felt like that really um, took on my skills. I just love, I, I, Jerry Rice was one of my, one of my big heroes growing up. So. Uh, I just, I just tried to mimic everything. You did, did you not. play wide receiver? I was, I started at, at trying to be a wide receiver, but they, somebody in their wisdom decided that, um, 
I would be on the other end and be a quarterback for a little while. So I'd, I had to learn to take a beating a little bit. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it ended up being a skill set that I, that, uh, that really helped transform me in, 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 a, in a way of leadership. Yeah. Um, and that ended up being really a, a, a crux in my life. Leadership has really become, um, I would say, kind of a, a, a life, a life motto or life um, pursuit for me. Um, not just learning to to lead myself, but um, now leading yeah, in in the coaching world and and just being a mentor and and um, in not just coaching, but in, in other areas of life. So that's a life skill that I, I took from that. I think early on, um, probably taking a beating as a quarterback helped with lacrosse. Too. yeah Been yeah that's for sure yeah 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 you know that lacrosse definitely uh definitely has its ways uh of of giving you a beating too and i, I probably ended up with more injuries in lacrosse than i did in in uh in football but um I, football at least i learned how to like fall the right way mm, that's like, true. you know lacrosse is not really as much about falling so you kind of just got to take the hits and keep it coming but yeah um so yeah football I, I mean i played a lot of other things but uh over time a lot of the guys that i played football with um we're also lacrosse players and um our the program in our in our hometown was really just starting to take off as i was getting into high school so i played baseball a lot of big part of my life and i, I really enjoyed it and i felt like i was actually pretty good at it um but it just wasn't enough action for me i i was either a pitching pit, yeah. if i wasn't pitching i was just either standing on first base because i'm left-handed or i'm standing in the outfield waiting for the ball to come in and just I don't know. I, I, I need a little more, a little more action. I yeah. like the run. So, um, so I, I transitioned over to lacrosse and I never looked back. Lacrosse really became my, my second love. And, um, uh, you know, those, those two, those two games have really been transformational for me. And, and really lacrosse was, was a vessel and a, a vehicle that God's used in a lot of ways in my life. Now still being in it. And I mean, I could, I could go down a list and, and tell you all the things that, that look, he used lacrosse into, to, to to help me along. Well, you can journey. share. You can share as many as you want. For sure. Uh, well, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of give you a brief timeline. I think I was uh, not really the academic uh, strong suit in my life. I, I actually was, I, I was a, I was a good student. I just didn't care. Um, I can relate. I, I can relate. Un- under motivated. Yeah. I just I had a lot of people. I, I always struggled with people telling, not telling me why I needed to learn things. Um, so I would do them and I understood them. And, uh, as soon as I understood them, I would just kind of put my head down on my desk and fall asleep in class. And, um, you know, it didn't really motivate me to do homework and stuff like that. But, um, so early on in my high school career, it wasn't like, um, you know, I, I struggled even just staying on teams. I, I mean, I had some coaches that, you know, I, uh, I, I learned some new words from them, uh, when, uh, when I found out, uh, that I wasn't, that when they found out that I wasn't going to be playing that semester. So, that, that kind of lit a fire under me. And I had some, some really, really good coaches early on in my career uh, playing um, just to name coach, coach Simmons and his wife, Christy. And one of our, one of my good buddies, Mike was, uh, he, he was there, is their parents. They, he coached, uh, played with Mike and, uh, and, and Mike and Christy were really good at, at uh, just realized, I think I needed a little like less distraction. Like, and this was in high school. Was, yeah. Yeah. So when I was a sophomore in high school, they used to, have me ride the bus back to their house every day because they knew there was a lot less young kids around run and, and a lot less distraction. So and they just let me sit down and do my homework with them. And, um, and it got me to continue to play and, and I'll always be grateful for that. And, and ultimately end up giving me an opportunity to even just, you know, set myself on a better course to even go to college, which I knew was always a pursuit I wanted, but I just, you know, I wasn't uh, mature enough at the time to, to recognize that. So. So that was one, um, and then you know, I through through a series of events, I got kind of got a hold of me after I graduated high school, and um, you know, kind of reminded me that like, hey, I, you know, my my faith is really really important to me, and not it's not just uh, um, you know something that I, uh, I I walk on the same path as everybody else, but I gotta I, I gotta kind of discover this for myself. So um, I did. Uh, I, I was, it took me a year to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. I ended up deciding like, you know, partway through my freshman year of college that um, I wanted to, to play lacrosse at a high, at a high level. So um, I went to, I started looking at I had some coaches that told me like, look, you can probably play uh, at, a, at a lot of programs and just, just walk on and, and have a lot of success. Um, so, you know, take your pick. Um, and I was like, you know, like, I just, I think I need to get this other area of my life life squared away first. Like, I got to know, like, I've, I've lived my whole life calling myself a believer, a Christian, you know, but 
uh, I, I think in a lot of ways I didn't know what that meant. Um, so uh, God, God sent me to a Bible school for a year, which which was which was a huge part of my life. But even even as I continued to to, to grow in that, that was another time when and I think God just kind of helped transform me and and, and really helped me learn. Um, but as I came out of that phase of my life, um, you know, lacrosse really moved back to, to more of the center of the picture. He took it away for a little bit. Um, I actually played basketball that year when I was at that school in Bible, so that was in Bible college. So I, you know, in one way or another, I think you can call yourself a multi-sport athlete now. Oh yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the regular old Deion Sanders, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I, playing so many sports has, has influenced the way that I coach now and has been helpful. But, um, I think as, as I got back to, I was always, it was always lacrosse that I was kind of going back to chase. So when I, when I was looking for a school, Liberty kind of came, uh, came into view and there was actually no team at, on Liberty's campus at the time. Um, but when I stepped on campus, I said, you know, Liberty's got so much going on. Um, and even this was 12 years ago. Um, there's Liberty has so much going on. The fact that they don't have a lacrosse team is kind of surprising. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I can be a part of that. So, um, I, uh, I came in my freshman year, they didn't really have a team and, and there was a group of guys that were just meeting on a regular basis. So I just jumped in with them and, and, and within, you know, I'd met with some, some people in the, in the, in the club sports department that was newly formed. Uh, and, and within, within a year, they were like, yeah, we're, we're going to start, a, start a program. So that was, that was kind of God bringing it back into my life. And, yeah. um, so it helped me focus on what kind of degree uh, I wanted to get, um, you know, or at least go after a, a degree at a four-year school, four-year institution. Um, I didn't expect to do that that way. I thought, really thought I was going to go at least division three or whatever, but, um, God just opened my doors and, and kind of let my heart on fire. And, uh, I went from there to, um, to just continue to play. So, um, and then long story short, we, we, I played three years in my undergrad. I stayed on as a graduate student. Um, there was a grad position that opened up in the, in the club sports department. Um, uh, Kyle McQuillan, our coach was, uh, was working in the department at the time under finance. So he said he needed some help. So I was a captain and a president. So I said, if you need help, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all in. Like, I just want to be a part of lacrosse and, um, and so that kind of opened the door to me getting my master's and then uh, a full-time position opened up a year later and I've been doing that ever since. So it was really just kind of a, a place where God, God has uniquely, you know, it, it feels like a, a position that God has really just opened up and it feels like uniquely suited for me in, in some personal way. Um, and, 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 uh, and just as I've been, it, it really hasn't been any work on my end other than just taking the next faithful step, it feels like. Um, but in that God is just like, just abundantly blessed it. And, um, I, you know, I, 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 to this day, like every, every year I step into a new, uh, a new season and it feels like I, we're, we're continuing to, to do something that's, that, that's, that's not just, um, competitive, but, um, but, but seeks, seeks the best for, ourselves and, and our team and, and, and it's, and it's God's program. So we're, we're all in. Yeah. Uh, I've been able to follow the, the lacrosse uh, team being at Liberty and I can, you know, follow and love every sport. Um, yeah. What, what have you been doing recently or the last few years that allows you to stay filled, filled up with the word and with God so that you can pour out into your athletes um, here at Liberty. They are already so, you know, they're poured out tremendously yeah. by coaches, uh, you know, uh, professors, RAs, all those things. But yeah. how, how have you been filling yourself up so that when you do have the time to talk to them and, and, and do life with them, you, you're able to share some, some of your um, lessons as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's been kind of a, 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 something I've, I've learned and grown in a lot. Um, and I, uh, I don't think it was always supernatural, um, but I, but even going back to, you know, learning about leadership and learning how to, how to lead your team. Um, you, uh, I, I think that that phase of my life early on really was the beginning of that journey. Um, and just has continued to, as I continue to step into it, I've, I've learned just, uh, it, it's, it's training. Um, it's, it's like being an athlete, it's yeah. practicing. And, you know, I think there's a lot of verses that, that talk about that. Um, you know, Paul, Paul references it several times, obviously. And, 
Um, you know, you see it in the Psalms, um, running the course like an athlete. And um, that to me is just, it was so relatable. And it was like, if I don't go to practice every day, um, then you know, I'm not probably going to yeah. be that good. And not you take know? too many days off in a row. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that's what, exactly what it was. And, you know, I, I think some of the Bible schools that I went to, you know, probably gave me help develop a little bit of dif- discipline in me in that way, um, where I was less disciplined, like I said, less motivated as a, as a reader and as a, as a student. But um, I think the, uh, the, the, the practice of, of repetition um, started to help me realize like, oh, like this, this is where this benefit is. And uh, this is, this is where this, this fits into my life. And really at this point, it's kind of come to a place where like, I, I have to be in such surrender to, to what God is, um, is speaking to me, um, that, uh, the only way I can really impact those athletes is just out of an overflow of what God is pouring into me. And, and even, even today, like, I think it's the same thing. Like I, had, I was like kind of racking my brain. What do I say? And I was just like, you know what, God, I'm just, just let me just surrender it. And, um, whatever, whatever you want me to share is, is going to come, come naturally from, from what you've put on my heart. Um, so it, it really does start with myself and where my identity lies yeah. and, uh, and, and, um, and just surrendering to that first. And that, that was a journey, uh, yeah. uh journey that, that started long ago, but, um, I it has been, has really, I, I mean, transformational is just a word that, I've, that really sticks out to me. And when one that is, just best described and is most powerful to me about how how that uh, influences yeah, my yeah. i talked talked to a volleyball coach recently and um he said when i when i try i fail when i trust i succeed you know right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't even, yeah, and i was no, like no. man i'm gonna be using that daily yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, it, but it's true it's the small steps that that god really looks for mm-hmm. in our faithfulness to him um yeah. this is those little moments that that, that he rewards I think more yeah. than winning a national championship and just saying to God be the glory, you know, right. Um, it, it's, he, he knows and he sees everything and he, and he, I think he, he, he's glorified through those small moments. Um, yeah. well, coach Lampano, thank you so much for, for being on the, on the podcast. We would like to pray for you. Um, do you have any prayer requests? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I, I think after coming out of this season, I think, uh, I think about our athletes a lot and um, we're always trying to trying to learn to grow into the next phase of, uh, of whatever our program direction, our program is going. And uh, really just kind of that our coaching staff and, you know, Kyle has, has led us um, uh, in a great way. So that just, we would kind of have wisdom and, and, and kind of be unified under, under the vision of, of, of what direction God wants us to go. Um, and that God would give us a chance to just, um, be available for our athletes as much as, as much as they need it. Um, because, uh, yeah, ultimately it's, it's, it's about transforming those guys too. So, yeah. All right. Let's pray. Yeah. Heavenly father, thank you so much for, for this day and this conversation. Um, thank you, Lord, for, for, um, Mike and, and his faithfulness to you, Lord, and his, and his dedication to the lacrosse program here at Liberty. Um, Lord, I pray that you continue to give him and the staff direction of what what is next for the program and in the to, to bring in the guys that that you want to be here at Liberty playing for the lacrosse team, Lord, that they'll be able to be impacted by 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 Liberty's mission, the mission of the mm-hmm. lacrosse team, Father, and uh, make make those coaches available to to those players in order to speak life into them, in order to um, to 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 help them grow in their in their physical abilities, as well as in their spiritual maturity, um, Lord, that they will be great role models to those players and to anyone that they come in contact with. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I got, I got one more question. Sorry. Go for it. Um, you guys just won a conference uh, championship and D1 yep. club level for the first time. Yeah. I know you guys have been fighting for that dream for, for a few years now. Um, what did God teach you after winning? Like what, what was some of the messages that you're hearing from God once you reach that level, right? Cause you fight, 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 and you actually achieve it. Yeah. Um, what, what was God um, teaching you through it? Um, that it's, that it's kind of not really in our control. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, we do, a, we, we take a big, 
uh, we take a lot of pride in the way that we, we operate in the way that we try to run our program. Um, we're a club program and, and, and a lot of people can, uh, have a certain definition of what that is. Um, and, uh, we invest a lot of time as coaches in trying to help understand like, Hey, yes, it's club, but like the, the level of commitment is, 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 is not what a typical, you know, yeah. what you typically think of a club, but, yeah. um, but as much as we can put into it um, and as much resource that we have and, and, and as much time and effort as we're, we're willing to put in um, like it, it's, it's a timing thing. Um, you know, it took us, uh, we, we, this was our 11th season at the uh, playing, which is crazy. Um, and it took just moving up to division one level. Like we were in a conference championship the first year when I was a player, um, the first year we were like, Oh, we won the division two one. We'll move up to division one. We'll just start rolling. And the, the championships are just going to pack in. And, and, uh, but like, no, we had to, we had to learn, we had to grow and it's been a little bit of a waiting period in it. Um, you know, I think not just in lacrosse, but I think God's t- been teaching me that like, Hey, like just wait on me and, and it'll be worth it. And I think he's continuing to try to show me that in, in a lot of areas of my life, but um, I, it was, especially this year with, with uh, COVID the last yeah. two years for us were really shortened. Yeah. Um, last year we got six games in, we were six and oh, and bank done, you know? Um, and this year, um, it was like every week it felt like we, we played a full, like, I think 10 game season, which was, you know, not our full slate, maybe about half the game, yeah. but it felt like we played 30 games, <laughs> you know, we were, we were just constantly, um, every week was, was a different, it was, a, was yeah. a different challenge. Um, but, uh, it was worth it. Like putting all the time and effort in, like God used that and, and uh, honored that. And, um, my, my dad flew in and I think the moment for me, my dad flew in and, and he doesn't get to come down very often just because he's so invested in, uh, in, in his practice yeah. and whatnot. But, but, uh, he, he flew in, he's like, you know, he didn't tell me he was coming and, um, uh, but him being, him being here that weekend was really powerful. And, um, and I just kind of, he came up and gave me a big hug at the end of it. And it was just kind of like, I had this moment of like, I don't deserve this, but this is awesome, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, um, and it was not just about the win, but it was about all, what it, the journey it took to get there. So that might sound a little bit like, no, cliche, that's great. but no, that's but great. Th- that's what I experienced. So that's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate you taking the time to be here. John, appreciate it.